get started in this very long lesson, and this is the conclusion of going through the book of Ezekiel and showing what God has set up for us to do and how we are supposed to live according to his will and his word. What you all see on the screen, I'm going to let that stay a while because I'm going to recite the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that the glory of God prayed for us before he came to the earth the second time and died. And primarily what we're going to be covering in this lesson is to show what happened when the glory of God first came to the earth. You see on the screen Abraham. We're going to not talk about any of those persons who preceded Abraham because they, many of them are down in the pit and many of them are in heaven. You'll find in the book of Revelations chapter 19 when John is talking about when he was up in the spirit that he saw much people in heaven. We're not going to talk about those people in heaven or those that went down into the pit prior to going down in the pit in Abraham. I'm going to apologize to you now because I have uh, you know, a candy in my mouth so my mouth get dry when I go through the lessons. And this is an extremely long lesson. I hope to watch it over and over again until you get the entire lesson. It's a Sunday school lesson for today's class regardless of what day you see it. But on the screen you see Abraham's seed, Ishmael, his oldest child, is on the far left, and the Isaac, his second child, is right in the middle up on the Abraham, and you'll see the other six sons that he had after his Sarah died, and we're going to talk about the fourth son of them, how they tie in with us today. And also on the screen, you'll see under Jacob, you see the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 12, talk about the gate's name of the 12 angels, that each one of the 12 angels that you see, which are the 12 tribes of Israel, or Judah, whose name you see here, or Jacob. But Jacob's name was changed, and of course, after his name was changed, and through the, down to the period of time, the ten tribes went one way, and two tribes went the other. But God brought His glory through the tribe of Judah. We're going to talk about that later as well. All right, we're going to go on now with this lesson. At the bottom, you see the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And when we talk about all the earth, we talk about Abraham and his eight seed, because God told Abraham in the book of Genesis that he, God, was going to bless Abraham's seed. So all eight sons of Abraham are blessed by God. And God then, through his glory, <clears throat> taught us how and what he was going to do. <clears throat> now I'm going to praise. You see how my throat is getting dry? I also have a cup of water here that I'll be apologizing drinking. But for some strange reason, when I go through some of these lessons, my voice have a tendency to dry up. So let us pray the prayer that Jesus Christ prayed or the glory of God prayed before he died for all mankind, all the seed, uh, all the spirits, seven spirits of God that were sent forth into all the earth. Looking up in his father's face, he prayed, Father, that I was come to glorify your son, that your son may also glorify you as you have given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ in whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work for what you gave me to do. Now, O Father, glorify you me with your own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So I have manifested your name unto the men which you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them me, and they have kept your word. And now they have known that all things whatsoever you have given me are of you. For I have given unto them the words which you gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from you, and they have believed that you did send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them of which you have given me, for they are yours, and all yours are mine, and all mine are thine, and I am glorified in them, and now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, <clears throat> keep through your own name those <clears throat> whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. So while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those that you gave me, I kept. And none of them are lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. And now come out to you in these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And sanctify them through your truth, and your word is truth. If you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they may be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also who shall believe on me through that word, that they may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they may be one in us, and that the world may believe that you have sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. 
I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and <clears throat> have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I will that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory for which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you did send me, and I have declared unto them your name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. So that's thus in the prayer that the glory of God prayed for us before he died. And after he died, he was pierced in the side. And after he pierced in the side, blood and water came out to wash away all the sins of the world. And then they took his nail scarred pierced body down and put it into a cold tomb where he stayed three days. And after three days, the glory of God raised him up out of the tomb and set him on the right hand of glory, while he now sits making petitions up on our behalf through the auspices of his Father, the precious Holy Spirit, who makes intercessions on our behalf in a groaning that cannot be uttered. And then the petition that he gives to his Son, when you ask in his Son's name, the glory of God will give it to you. He said, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone who asks it will receive it, and he or she who seeks it will find it. And to him or her knock, it shall be opened. But on the screen, you also, you see what happened. Now, I'm making this recording in the United States of America. And in the United States of America, we had two changes in a state where both an Israelite and a Judite won a Senate seat in the United States Senate. And by winning those two seats in year 2021, those two really somewhat changed their history in America because it was the first time that an Israelite and a Judite in the same state had won a Senate seat. And you will see on the information taken from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47, verse 21 through 23. I'm not going to read it. You can stop this slide. Read it for yourself. You also see Genesis 49, 8 through 49, 12 that you see one of the sentences are pointing to that message that God has put in there for all of us to adhere to, whether we understand it or not. And God said, above all I get it, we should get understanding. So I hope that you go to that and understand it. Now, we're going to get on <clears throat> with this long lesson. And before we get into the lesson, let's get some understanding about what this is about. All these data that we're going to put in this Sunday School lesson for today's class You'll find in the Book of David, YouTubeVideo.com, you see at the top, Book of David, YouTubeVideo.com. This lesson and all the other lessons that we hope for you to take a, a here to is in the Book of David YouTube video. Now, on the screen, you'll see a quick conversion of what a reeve is in English versus feet. And in the Bible, we're talking about measurements of by reeve. And you see that one reeve is equal to 8.78937 feet. So that's quite a feat. And one reeve is over eight feet. All, we round it off, we're talking about nine feet. And then five reeves rounded off is 44 feet. So you see how it breaks down, put a reeve into feet. And on the right side, it breaks down a cube, a cubic. Now, a cubic is like one cubic is equal to 1.5 feet. So look at 40 cubits. 40 cubits is equal to 60 feet. 50 cubits is equal to 75 feet. So the measurements of what we're going to get to in this lesson is why we're giving you this information up front so you can have an idea of what we're talking about as we go through. Now here, again, we're breaking it down to show you a furlong. What is a furlong? Furlongs is three quarters of our miles. Well, one furlong each is 660 feet. You have an idea. You may not. You may want to find out how many feet are there in one mile. So it's easy for you to understand what we're talking about when we get in this lesson because one furlong equal to a mile is 0.125 miles. You see one furlong. So look at 50 furlongs. You see how long furlongs is? That's six miles. You, you understand what I'm talking about? So we're just now trying to break these measurements down because this lesson is based upon these measurements of reeve or cubic and, and furlongs that we're going to cover in this lesson, okay? And also we're going to show you how to do, well, how to use the calculator. We're going to get to that too. This lesson just laid on down through the presentation. This lesson started in verse, in chapter 40 of the book of Ezekiel, and we're going to go through the 40th chapter in this lesson, not to stop every slide or every chapter for yourself. You can see this lesson starts in chapter 40, verse 1, and it goes down through chapter 40, verse 20. So we're not going to read each one of these uh, verses, of course, but we're just going to highlight to show you the things that you see in yellow is my fingerprint, 
and your or either my revelation what I'm talking about fingerprints and we all got different fingerprints I'm just trying to show you what what the spirit brought out to me but you when you read this or you stop this and listen at it we have no idea what the spirit is going to give out to you because no two revelations are exactly the same just like no two human beings fingerprints alike now what we're really talking about in this lesson is that the glory of God showed the son of man and you know the other lessons from chapter 40 verse 1 all the way down to ch uh, chapter 40 the glory of God is talking to the son of man and the glory of God, or Jesus Christ, first coming to the earth, because Jesus Christ is the glory of God. You can see that back in other lessons. To know what Jesus is, we know who he is. He's the son of the only living God. But what is he? He is the glory of the only living God in a human form, because he did come to the earth a second time through his mother Mary, who was overshadowed by the, his Holy Spirit, his father, and she conceived the glory of God named Jesus Christ. But before he came to to the earth through his mother's womb, the glory of God came and talked with the Son of Man as he was by the river Kibar, where the captivity of the uh, 12 tribes of Judah, <clears throat> of Israel. So now we're going to get into this lesson. Look at verse 2. It said, In the vision <clears throat> of God brought me into the land of Israel and set me up on the high mountain by which was the uh, fame of a city on the south. And he brought me there and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of a brass, of, of brass, with the flax in his hand and measuring reed, and stood in the gate. Now, the, the stop. So what we're talking about now is the brass man, and that's what this lesson will be when you saw it as it started uh, up under the the, pen, the uh, thumbnail. Is talking about the brass man and the measurements of the brass man. So the brass man is measuring. What we're going to be talking about, we talked, started out talking about this 12 gates, we saw the angels, where the brass man is measuring the inheritance of the earth, the, and he's also measuring the city that's going to come down out of heaven. He's also measuring the suburbs of the city. That's the gist of the story, but as we go through this, you see we highlighted what the brass man was doing, he's measuring, so when you see the word measure or measured, you're going to see in bold, so you get an understanding of what the brass man is doing. So we're letting you know from up front <clears throat> that the brass man is doing the measure. I'm going to stop and drink a glass of water. So the brass man is doing all the measurements in this process. And the brass man is talking to the son of man. The son of man is the one <clears throat> that's telling us the story by the river that was by the river Kiba in the book of chapter 1 of the book of Ezekiel. He said he saw the glory of God come expressly out of heaven up on Ezekiel, the Buzite, the, the, I'm sorry, the, the priest, son of Buzai, which was a Buzite. And we'll talk about that in other lessons. We're not going to get into now. So make sure you go back and get an understanding of those lessons as well. We're moving on in chapter 4. And we're going through this now from chapter 40 through chapter 48. I'm not going to stop all of this. I want you to stop this slide. Just click the slide because this is a video presentation. Stop the slide and see what the brass man is measuring or what has been measured by the brass, brass man as he gives us a description of the house. He gives us a description of the city. He gives us a description of the suburbs. And every one that you saw under Abraham is a part of that city. Even you, you and especially you, if you are not an Israelite, if you are not a Judite, but what the God is telling us in this lesson, specifically in chapter 47 through 48, he's letting you and I know that whatever he has given to one, he'll give it to the other one. And if you are among the Israelites and the Judites, which we all are, then you and I are just a matter of understanding. And God said in Proverbs, above all I get and get an understanding. And that's what this lesson is to try and give you, is an understanding of the process. We're in chapter 4, and we're now moving out of, moving on in chapter 40 to give an understanding how the brass man is measuring the house. Look for an example at 45, verse 45. He said unto me, this is the brass man, this chamber whose percept is toward the south is for the priest and the keepers of the charge of the house. How about God's house? And the chambers whose percept is toward the north for the priest is a keeper of the charge of the altar. This is in God's house, and there's no uh, the sons of Zodak, Zodak, we're going to show them later, is among the sons of Levi. 
And Zildak is not a son of Jacob, but Levi is a son of Jacob. We can get into all of that, and you get an understanding of that when you go through this process. But look at chapter 41. We're out of chapter 40 at verse 49, and we move right on in the story in verse in chapter 41. It said, Afterward, he brought me into the temple and measured the post and this six cubits before the one side and six cubits before the other side. So now we moved out of the reeds that we were talking about earlier, and now we just moved into the cubit. So when you want to get an understanding of a reed and how many feet that is and want to get an understanding of a cube, you go back and look at that, and then you can get an understanding of how the, the temple looked and understanding how the house looked. And specifically, if you use your table and, and the calculator, because we put the calculator URL there, and all you got to do is use that to give you an idea of how long this city is. I'm going to stop and drink a lot of water. <clears throat> so we're moving on. Make sure you stop this and understand and look at, if you would please, verse 4 of chapter 41. So he measured the length there are 20 cubits and the breadth uh, 20 cubits before the temple. And he said unto me, this is the most holy place. So this is a brass man who is measuring the temple, and he's telling the son of man what he's doing and why he's doing it and who he's doing it for and who is instructing him to do it, which is the glory of God. It's the glory of God that's instructing the brass man, and the brass man is telling the story to the son of man. Just like prior to chapter 40 in the book of Ezekiel, it's the glory of God that's talking specifically to the son of man. But in chapter 40, the Glory of God started talking to the brass man to tell the son of man what he was doing to build God's temple, God's city, and the suburbs of the city. That's what we're talking about in this lesson. So to get an understanding, make sure you stop it and read each verse, and also go back and use whatever version of the Bible that you want to use to use to get the information that's in the book of Ezekiel. I'm using the King James Version, but I pray you use whatever version you like. Now we're continuing in chapter 41, and then down to chapter 42. You see the measurements of the house 100 cubits long up in uh, verse 13. So he measured the house 100 cubits long and the separated piece of the building with the walls thereof 100 cubits long and the breadth of the face of the house in the separate place toward the east 100 cubits long and he measured the length of the building. So all of this is a brass man is measuring the temple in God's house. He's measuring the house. So make sure you understand what's happening now. This is a brass man or the man that looks like he's brass talking to the son of man, getting his instruction, the brass man is, from the glory of God. Look at chapter 42. Then he brought me forth into the other court, other court and the ways toward the north, and he brought me into the chambers that was over there against a separate pair place and which is before the building toward the north. So this is the brass man telling the son of man what he's doing, and the brass man is instructing the son of man what to do and how he's doing what he's doing. But look, before the length of 100 cubits was in the north door, and the breadth was 50 cubits. This is just the door. So you go back and look how many feet there are in a cubit. Go back and multiply 50 feet, 50 cubits, so you know how big the door actually is against the 20 cubits, which is in the inner court and out of, against the pavement, which was in the ultimate court, and the gallery against the gallery, three stories. Three stories, the building is three stories, but how long and how wide is the door? You have to get that calculation. You've got to go back and know how many feet there are in a cubit. So that's why we put that information there so you can get an understanding of what this lesson is really all about and to show you how long this lesson is and what is involved in this Sunday school lesson for today's class. It may take you 40, 50 days to get an understanding, but every day that you look at it, or get an understanding of you and the Sunday school class for to, uh, the Sunday school lesson for today's class. Moving on, we're in chapter 42. Now we're still in chapter 42, and we're starting at verse 7, but it's going all the way through chapter 42, and moving on down to see it bottom down at the uh, end of chapter verse 20. It started talking at the, what's in chapter 43. But just to go back and look at chapter, verse 13, said, Then said he unto me, this is the brass man, and the north chamber and the south chamber, which is before the separate place, they are holy chambers, where the priest that approaches the, the Lord shall eat the most holy things. There shall they lay the most holy things and the meat offerings and the sin offerings and the trespass offerings for their holy place. These are the 
priests in the house of the Lord and what they are instructed to do, but the brass man is measuring where they are going to do this. All this work, look at 16, look at 17, look at 8, verse 18, look at verse 19 and verse 20. All this is about the measure or measurements that the brass man is doing in the house of the Lord. Look at chapter 43. Afterward, the brass man brought me to the gate, even the gate that looks toward the east. And behold, the glory of God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like the noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. Stop. So that's in chapter verse 2 of chapter 43. Now he's giving you, the brass man is, I mean the son of man is giving you this instruction, but the son of man is telling you what the brass man brought him into the gate of the looks to the east. And what the brass man saw was the glory of God. No, no. What the son of man saw was the glory of God that came from the east, and his voice, the glory of God's voice, was many noises, and the glory of God, uh, earth, there's earth shine with the glory of God's glory. And it was according to the appearance of the vision that I saw, according to the vision that I saw when I was um, uh, to be destroyed in the city. And the vision was like the vision that I saw by the river Kibar, and I fell upon my face. Stop. So in what was starting out in chapter 1, of the book of Ezekiel, the son of man is the, who we don't know the name of at that time because we don't get the son of man's name until we get to the second chapter of the book of Ezekiel. But now we know that the son of man that was given this exact story here in chapter one of the book of Ezekiel is what he's describing the same glory that he saw in chapter one that come especially upon Ezekiel. His same son of man is now giving us another uh, well a view of what he saw at the river Kibar when he fell upon his face there. And the glory of God came upon the house by the way of the gate whose prospects is toward the east. Now the east is what the glory of God is going to come. And you'll see that throughout this lesson. So the Spirit took me up, this Holy Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. And behold, the glory of God filled the house. And I, and, and I heard him speaking unto me out of the house and the man stood by me. Who? The, the brass man stood by him as the glory of God was talking to the Son of Man. Standing by the Son of Man, verse 5, is what was taking place as the glory of God was talking to the Son of Man. Verse 6 is showing that he was standing, the brass man was standing by the Son of Man that was taking place. And at the bottom you see I've dipped references the Book of David YouTube video or other lessons, including lessons on uh, the book of Ezekiel. Moving right along, verse 7 said, And he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne, this is the glory of God talking to the Son of man, the glory of my God, and the place of the soles of my feet, this is the glory of God, where I will dwell in the middle of the children of Israel forever, and my holy name shall the, whole, uh, shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither shall they, nor the kings by their holdem nor by the caucuses of the kings in their high places. Stop. So the glory of God is now talking to the Son of Man, telling the Son of Man that his throne, the glory of God's throne, will always be in the middle of the house of Israel. Now the house of Israel has 12 tribes, and within the 12 tribes are all the sojourners, and that's you, you, and especially you. You live in the house of Israel. But now Israel and the, the house of Israel did split up to become 10 on one side and two on the other. And that's why we get the house of Judah because to come through the house of Judah is the glory of God through his mother's womb. Mary on one side was uh, of his great father was Solomon. On the other side was Nathan. But we're going to get into that as another lesson. You'll see that back up in the uh, book of David uh, YouTube video and other lessons. But let's stand on the course here. Look at verse 12. And the law of the house upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof, round and about, shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house, the law of the house. And look at verse 12. It's talking about the law of the house. And you get an understanding of this. Stop this. Study for yourself. Look at verse 18. And he said unto me, Son of man, this is the glory of God talking. Thus said the Lord God, these are the ordinance of the altar in the day where they shall make it and they offer burnt offerings thereon, and sprinkle their blood thereon. Now, this is during the uh, book of Ezekiel. This is B.C. Understand, all this is the glory of God, B.C., 
before Christ, Christ came through his mother's womb. All this information that you see in the book of Ezekiel took place before Christ was came to the earth. The second time, <clears throat> we're looking at the first time he came to the earth because Jesus Christ is the glory of God. It's the glory of God that's talking to the Son of Man to tell the Son of Man what's going to take place A.D., after the death of Jesus Christ. That's really what we're talking about. When you get to the end of this, you're going to see that you as a sojourner is in the house of Israel because there's only one house. God only has only one dwelling place. At one time, he was in two or three places. Well, he's always in two or three places at the same time because he's the past, the present, future, all at the same time. But what we're talking about, his dwelling place here upon the earth is in the house of Israel, in all of the house of Israel. Look at, let's look at some, let's look at verse 9. Now let them put away their hodom. They're talking about acting like a whore. The house of Israel was like a whore. The all 12 tribes to God was like a whore. And the carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the middle of them forever. This is the son of God talking, the son of the glory of God, talking to the Son of Man, that he's letting the Son of Man know that if we get rid of the whoredom and the idolatries and all the other abominations that they are committing, if they get rid of those, he's promising to let the Son of Man know that he will dwell among them forever. We're moving on through this understanding. Make sure you stop this and stop it for yourself. I'm moving on. Look down at verse 18 for, for the sake of time. Our time is getting away from us here. And he said unto me, this is the glory of God, said unto me, Son of man, thus said the Lord God, these are the ordinance of the altar of the day that they shall make the offering and the burnt offerings thereon and the sprinkling of the blood thereon. And he, and you shall give the priest of the Levites and the seed of Zodak. Now that Zodak is again. Now Zodak is not uh, one of the 12 tribes of, of Israel, but you're going to see the sons of Zodak took what the role the Zodak has in the presence of God and what they take place. We're not going to have time to go through that in this lesson because this is a Sunday school lesson for today's class only in the book of Ezekiel. What we'll get into, get an understanding of Zodak until we get in another lesson. Verse 22 said, In the second day you shall offer the kid the, of a goat without blemish <clears throat> of the uh, of a sin offering, and they shall cleanse the altar, and they did cleanse it with the bullock. When you have made an end of the cleanliness, you shall offer a young bullock without blemish, and a ram without of the flock without blemish. This is what God is instructing the son of man to do. Stop it and get an understanding of what we're talking about. We're moving on to go to the next chapter. In this process, of chapter 44, we're going to stop it at chapter 48, but we're not going to go as slow as we've been going. We're going to try to speed this up. But verse 40, chapter 44 said, Then he brought me, who? The brass man brought the son of man. He brought me in the way of the gate of the outer sanctuary, which looks toward the east. Everything is looking toward the east, right? And it was shut. Then said he, then said the Lord unto me, this is the glory of God talking to the son of man now, this gate shall be shut and shall not be open, and no man shall enter by it, because the Lord of the God of Israel has entered in by it, therefore it shall be shut. So that when God, when the glory of God enter into his sanctuary in the temple or in his house, no one be able to go through the door that he's going to enter to, which looks toward the east. So we're moving on through chapter 44. I'm not going to go through the details of this, but look at verse 9 in chapter 44. Then said the Lord, no stranger uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh. So we're talking about two circumcisions that God is talking about. And we talked about it one time last week, and I'm not going to go into that, but one man had a, large, a heart that was too large, and another man had a heart that was too small. But what God is talking about here is just being circumcised in the heart. To, to be circumcised in the heart is to accept the glory of God. To, for one to be circumcised in the flesh and a man can, has to be circumcised in the flesh. But if a man is not circumcised in the flesh, and the man is circumcised in the heart, he's still in the house of the Lord. I'm going to say that kind of slow, because what we're talking about, an uncircumcised heart, is anybody, any race, any color, any creed, any kind, any gender. But a person that's uh, only a man can be circumcised in the flesh. 
A female can't be circumcised in the flesh, only a man, but a, both a male and a female has to be circum or have to be circumcised in the heart in order to live in the kingdom of God. We're moving on with that. It's another story for another day. The Book of David YouTube video is where you will find the information about that. I'm moving on into chapter 44 until we get to chapter 45. Now, in chapter 44, again, you see Zodak at the bottom at the top, but the priests of the Levites and the sons of Zodak that keep charge of the sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me. That Now, understanding now, we're talking about the Levites took care of God's house. Well, we know what happened with the Levites. They were the first ones to to go, actually commit, because and when Moses went up into the mountain, it was the Levites that made the golden calf, okay? So what God has done in this understanding is that the priests of the Levites, which were all priests, and the sons of Zodak that kept charge of my sanctuary, of the glory of God's sanctuary, when the children of Israel went astray from me, and they did go astray, that's why they're in captivity for 70 years, because they went astray from God. And make sure you stop this and read each verse. And when you see the green, you're talking about the glory of God is doing the talking to the Son of Man. And also the brass man is talking to the Son of Man. And the glory of God is talking through the brass man to the Son of Man. Get that understanding when you go through this. Look at verse 26. And after the, he cleans him, it shall be reckoned unto him seven days. And in this, the day of he goes into the sanctuary, this is talking about the priest and the end of uh, ministers to the sanctuary, he shall offer sin offering. This is the God talking about the, what will be happening to the priest that's keeping his house and the sons of Zodak. Look at verse 28, and it shall be unto them for an inheritance. I am their inheritance. God is the children of Israel and your inheritance and my inheritance. And, and he shall, and he shall give them no possession in Israel. I am their possession. God is your possession. God is your inheritance. Whether you understand it or not, if you go back and read 2 Kings, if you don't understand it, and you'll get an understanding that God is your inheritance, and he's also your possession. And in the day that, I'm looking at 27, verse 27 here, in the day that he goes into the sanctuary and unto the inner court and the ministers in the sanctuary, he shall offer up the sin offerings. This is what the priest is doing, and letting you know that God said that I am their inheritance. We're moving on with this. Because of the sake of time, we don't want to go over an hour. Okay, now in chapter 45. We want to go into chapter 48, and we're going to end this lesson. Moreover, when you shall divide the lot in the land of the inheritance, you shall offer the oblation uh, to the Lord and the holy portions of the land that shall be in the length of five and 20,000 reeves. Stop. Make sure you understand what a reeve is. And we tell back in earlier that a reeve, one reeve is seven, over seven point, uh, well, round it off to uh, eight feet. Well, look look how many times we're talking about 20,000 reeves. So you get an idea of how the land that we're talking about, 20,000 reeves, if one reeve is equal to seven feet. So multiply that times 20,000 times 1,000. And then you're going to get an understanding of that. And then keep on reading that. He said, and the fifth and the 50 cubits round and about four, I mean, the four of the suburbs there are. Talking about the suburbs of just one of these possessions. We're talking about the city. We're talking about the suburbs, the sanctuary. All this is the measurements that the, the brass man is doing and showing the Son of Man what he's doing. And the glory of God is also instructing the Son of Man what the, glory, what the brass man is doing. It is, may be confusing and it may not, but to get an understanding, make sure you stop these data, stop the slide. Read it for yourself. Don't have to read it from this page. Just go to chapter 45 in your Bible and read chapter 45 in your Bible. Read the whole 40 through 48 in your Bible, and which may be a different version than this. Part. This is the King James Version. But you read yours so you can get an understanding of what the glory of God is talking about and the first time the glory of God came up on the earth. And that was in a, I mean, B.C., before Christ was came through his mother's womb, Mary, the glory of God, which is Jesus Christ, came to the earth and talked to the Son of Man while the children of Israel were in captivity in Babylon. And also he talked to them uh, through the measurements of the brass man to show what he had sent the brass man to do about what we're going to talk about in a few minutes. When you saw when I started looking at the beginning of those 12 uh, the gates of the city were named after the 12 angels or the tribes of Judah. Well, 
all, all of those names are there because we know Joseph, uh, Ephraim, which is Joseph's son, and, and the Manasseh, which was Joseph's son. They got also well, one of those, uh, to, uh, three of those 12 gates. And why to that, we're going, we, we got that in other lessons. Make sure you go to the Book of David YouTube video, and you're going to see other lessons as to why the 12 tribes didn't get, well, the, uh, just was a substitute of Joseph and his three, because three of the children of the 12 did not make it to get the inheritance. So that's a lesson for another day. Moving on. We'll look down, and we're going to skip down to uh, verse, uh, the last verse of this, and that's going to be look 16. And all of the people in the land shall give this oblation to the prince of Israel, and he, it shall be the princes are part of, of give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings and the feast and the new moon. And in the new moon and in the new moon, it shall be the Sabbath, the new moon. You see how the moon started back now. I grew up with the understanding of the full moon, the half moon, the quarter moon. And here he's talking about the new moon. So the moon does have a role in what we do. And so does the sun, as you know. But here we're talking about yeah. and what, what happened in the house of Israel in the new moon. And it shall be a sin offering and a meat offering and the burnt offering and a peace offering shall make reconciliation for the house of Israel. It shall be a reconciliation. To, re to reconcile something is to reconcile, is to repent and become whole. Is if you take different parts and put them together. And you, you know, one way to look at reconciliation is take a puzzle. And you take all the parts of the puzzle and put it together and get one puzzle. That's a complete reconciliation. So this is our understanding here of getting how we're going to use the word reconcile, a reconciliation of the house of Israel. Okay, we're moving on out of to uh, this verse. We're still in 45. And see down in the middle of the halfway is the child that kept the 46. But in the verse 46, it said, Then said he, Then said the Lord God, This is the glory of God, the gate of the inner court and the look toward the East, everything that you see, all the lessons that you see that the girl God is talking about is what looks toward the East. <laughs> and it's amazing, but let's go down to verse 3. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the door of the gate before the Lord in the Sabbath, in the Sabbath and in the new moon, in the Sabbath and in the new moon. So you see, the new moon is important to get an understanding of the new moon. To get an understanding, get an understanding of the new moon because the new moon is something that the glory of God in chapter 46, you know, back in chapter 44, 45, is talks about the new moon and what we're to do in the new moon. And looking, moving on, stop this information. I want to just ring on that one point, but stop this information and look at it. Now let's look at verse 9. But when the people of the land shall come before the Lord in the solemn feast, he that enters in by the way of the north gate to worship shall go out of the way of the south gate, and the inner in the way of the south gate shall go forth by the north gate and return out of the way. In other words, you don't go through the same gate. If you come through the north, you go out to the south. If you come through the south, you go out to the north. And it, but and it shall be forth, shall, shall, shall go forth over against it. And the prince of the middle of them, when they go in, shall go in. And when they go forth, they shall go forth. So what he's talking about is going in one gate, leaving out another gate. That's what he's talking about in chapter 46. Now we're moving on in through 46, and we're almost down at the end of chapter 46. And down at the end of chapter 46, and I'm going to skip down there for the sake of time. <clears throat> for the sake of time. Then said, well, we're looking at verse 20 of chapter 46. Then said he unto me, this is a place where the priest shall boil the transgression offering and the sin offering where they are, where they shall bake the meat that they bear them out of in the other court to sanctify the people. Then brought he unsaid, then he brought me forth into the other court and caused me to pass by the four corners of the court and behold, in every corner of the court, there was a court. And in the fourth court, in the fourth corner of the court, there were courts joined of four cubits. You understand what a cubic is, long, and 30 broad. And the four corners were one measures. And there was a row of buildings rounding about them, rounding about them four. And it was made with broiling places up on the row Round it about. Then said he unto me, These are the places 
of them that boil where the ministers of the house shall boil the sacrifices of the people. Isn't that amazing? So we have an understanding now. Make sure you go back and look at the other lessons in chapter 1 through chapter 39 of the book of Ezekiel to see what we're talking about and find that information in the book of David, youtubevideo.com. Now we're now in chapter 47. The measurements are now over of the house of the Lord. Well, now we're talking about the measurements of the inheritance of the people and what land that God is telling the brass man to measure in the suburbs of the city. Up until this time, we've been talking about the temple. We've been talking about the measure of the city. And now we're talking about the measures of the inheritance of the tribes of the people whose land are going to be used to get the measurements for the world, if you can understand what I'm saying. So let's go down and start in this at, well, this slide. Afterward, he brought me again into the house of the Lord. Oh, let's stop. After this, he brought me again unto the door of the house. And behold, the waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward from the front, forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down under from the right side of the house. Stop. So we're now talking about what's getting ready to take place with the measures of the earth, of the suburbs of the city. Now, we're talking about furlongs. We're going to start talking about furlongs now. Now, you can see the furlongs in the book of Ezekiel, I'm sorry, in the book of Revelation. But to get an understanding of a furlong, I put that information up front. We're talking about 12,000 furlongs by 12,000 furlongs. And when you get the understanding of how long a furlong is, which is three quarters of a mile by 12,000, that's quite of a distance. That's over 1,500, if you can do the math, and you're going to get to that. Anyway, you'll get it. <laughs> I'm moving on. This is, oh, again, with chapter 47. is on the 48 verse. But make sure you stop this slide and get an understanding of what's being talked about with the measurements of the server. What I got to want to do this. Look at verse 6. And he said unto me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me into the uh, and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now, we don't know what bank, brink of the river he's talking about, River Kiba, uh, brink of the river. Now, when he had returned, behold, at the brink of the river were very many trees on this side and on that side. He then said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which is, which brings out forth into the sea, and the waters shall, shall come and live, and the, there shall be great multitude of fishes. Understanding what the fishes are that God is talking about, because back up in the other lessons, he started talking about the fishes and who would have the fish nets. So understand this and then the measurement. Now look down at verse 13. Thus said the Lord, this shall be the borders where you shall inherit the land according to the twelve tribes of Israel. But look, twelve tribes of Israel. Joseph shall have two portions. Remember we're talking about who Joseph, Joseph was was uh, the son that the eleven sons buried, and he went into Egypt, and he had two sons. And Joseph gets two portions after you inherit it, one as well as the other, concerning that which I left upon my hand, lifted my hand, and gave it unto your fathers. And this land shall be fall unto you for an inheritance. And this land shall be fall unto you as an inheritance. Understand what the glory of God is telling the son of man through the voice of the brass man. The man as a measure that looks like brass. We move it on. With it. This is 47. And we're going to go this before we get to 48. And this is verse 47 down through the... Uh, 23 verses in 47 until you get to chapter 48. We're all at the conclusion of this, and we're going to conclude this because we've got a few ways to go. So make sure you stop this, these data, this is a slide, and study for yourself. Look at verse 11. And it shall be for the priests that are sanctified of the sons of Zodak. And now, you, when you see Zodak, you always see the Levites close by because he was a priest of the Zodak's sons and the Levites. But we said earlier, the Levites did things that they were not to do. But look back up in uh, 
before we go to verse 4. And the border and the borders of Netham for the east side unto the west side are portioned for Manasseh. So you see, Manasseh got the uh, inheritance that Nephtali was supposed to get. And, and, and then uh, Manasseh and Ephraim, you see Ephraim, look at verse 6. And by the borders of Ephraim from the east side, even until the west side, will be the portion of Reuben. So see, Reuben didn't get the inheritance, but instead of Reuben not getting it, and Reuben was one of the sons of Jacob, but he didn't get the inheritance. Now, instead of giving it to Reuben, <coughs> God gave it to Ephraim, and Ephraim was one of Joseph's sons. See, your boy, and Joseph tribe got two portions. Remember back up, we talked about Joseph tribe got two portions. Well, those two portions went to Manasseh and to Ephraim. But Reuben and the Nephilim, he didn't get any inheritance. But look down at verse 7, because it was back in verse, well, it was first started this, where the Judite was pointing to the 49th chapter of the book of, of, of Genesis. Look at verse 7. And by the borders of Reuben from the east shall be side the portion of for Judah. So Judah, and look at verse 8, and by the borders of Judah from the east unto the west shall be offerings which you shall offer in the five and twenty thousand reeds, the breadth and the length of one of the other parts from the east side to the west side. So you see how big of this land of Judah that God gave to the land of Judah? Now remember, Jerusalem is in Judah. Jerusalem is not in Israel. Jerusalem is in the land of Judah. And the land of Judah is huge. You just told you 20,000 reeds. But what is one reed? One reed is 7,000 feet. <laughs> a seven point. We pointed out, go back to the calculator and multiply 7,000 reeds. The wealth and the breadth and the size. And that'll give you an idea of how big the land of Judah is, regardless of what we take place. Just Get an understanding of what God is saying, not what you find that man say. Get an understanding of what God is telling, the glory of God is telling the Son of Man. If you get that understanding, you will then have an understanding of what the glory of God has said, not what someone said. Look at verse 11. And it shall be for the peace that priest that sanctified the sons of Zodak, which have kept my charge. He's saying that the sons of Zodak didn't do like the sons of Israel. The sons of Israel didn't keep his charge. The Levites was a Levite was one of the sons of Israel. And what God is saying here <coughs> is that the Levites didn't keep his charge. Look at verse, go back and just look at what we're just saying in verse 11. And it shall be for the priests that are sanctified of the sons of Zodak, which have kept my charge, which went not astray when the children of Israel went astray as Levites went astray and the oblation of the land that is offered shall be unto them, talking about just the Levites, the uh, Zodites, the thing most holy by the borders of the Levites. Right by the borders of the Levites. So what the Levites would get in their inheritance, he gave to the sons of Zodak. So I'm moving on with this. It gives you an understanding. Look at 15. And the, and the 5,000 that are left and the breath over against the 525,000 shall be the profane place for the city that dwell and the suburbs of the city be, be there. Now we're moving on. We're moving into 48 because in the verse 48 was going to give you something. I'm, I'm going to skip all the way down there now for the sake of time. Out of all the measures that the brass man has measured, you'll see this here. Just make sure you stop this. <clears throat> Out of all the measurements that the brass man has measured to give them the city, this house, and this suburbs. The name of the city that we're going to talk about, look at verse 35 and get an understanding. It was about round about to 18,000 measures with an S. Measures with an S. 18,000 measures with an S. That the name of the city from that day shall be, the Lord is there. So we're talking about now we're going to move into the city. And the name of the city that we're talking about in now, and this information is not coming from the book of Ezekiel because it's only 48 verses that we're talking about in the verses of Genesis. But verse 35 is the last verse in the 48th chapter of the book of, of, of uh, Ezekiel. So from this point on, we're talking about the city that's going to come down out of the heaven, the new Jerusalem, 
And the name of the New Jerusalem is what it's saying here in verse, chapter, verse 35. It was around about the 18,000 measures. And the name of the city from that day, from when the brass man completes the measurements, shall be the Lord is there. All right, now we're moving on for the time. About 10 minutes left. This is Revelation chapter 14, 20. And it was upon the round press toward the without the city, the city that we just got to talking about, that the blood came up to the wine to the wine press, even up to the horse's brow. Now you know how high a horse is, and that's how deep the blood was, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. What's a furlong? You gotta go back them to the calculator and understand how what one furlong is. But this we're talking about the space of a thousand and 600 furlongs. So you're taking 1,600 furlongs and find out how deep was the blood to be 16,000 furlongs deep. You understand? 16,000 furlongs. Look at verse 21, 16. We're in Revelation chapter verse 21, 16. And the city lie, uh, lie four squares. Four squares. Understand four? What a four square is. And the length is as large as a breath. And the measures of the city with a reed is 20,000 furlongs. With a reed, you know how long a reed is, but the measurements of the city is 20,000 furlongs. So you multiply 20,000 furlongs by reeds, and the length and the breadth of the city is a high and equal. In other words, it was 20,000 furlongs high, 20,000 furlongs wide, 20,000 furlongs long, 20,000 furlongs uh, deep, if you can understand what I'm saying. And to get the conversions of this feet, you see I put it here for you, the URL that sees how to convert the furlongs to feet and how to convert the furlongs to mile. On the left side, it'll tell you how to convert the furlongs to feet. And on the right side, it'll tell you how to convert the furlongs to miles. Well, look, 10 furlongs to feet is equal to 6,060 feet. That's 10 furlongs. But we're talking about 10,000, no, 12,000 furlongs. You see, not just 10, 12,000. So when you multiply 12,000 furlongs, you'll get a quite a few feet. And look down at the miles. So the calculator I put there also to show you how to arrive at a, they, or to get this process. Okay, we only have a couple more to go and then we're going to end this, okay? Now, this is a calculator how to convert the furlongs to feet, okay? The other information about this whole process, I put that there to show you the Book of David YouTube video just to remind you that you need to go there and get other lessons and to understand that this is a Sunday school lesson for today's class. Now, I'm getting ready to conclude this before we go to the end, okay? And this is the conclusion. Well, Carl, we're concluding on this city. This is a city that we're talking about, and there came unto me one of the, uh, uh, well, this is the angels. I remember we talk, started talking about the 12 angels having the 12 names of the city? Well, this is the book of Revelations, and we're talking in verse 9 through, uh, I think it's 25, 26, 27. And I'm not going to read all of them. I'm just going to give you a highlight of what we're talking about in this city. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven plagues, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me. <clears throat> now, to get an understanding of what that is, got to read the book of Revelations to understand the 12 angels that had the seven last plagues. That's another lesson, but you'll find it in the book, <clears throat> uh, book of David, YouTube video, <clears throat> uh, dot com. And I, and, he, and I saw... The bride's wife, the lamb's, the, the, the bride, the lamb's wife. And I saw the bride of the lamb's wife. And he carried me away into the spirit in a great high mountain and showed me the great city. The city was the new Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. It's the new Jerusalem that we're talking about up in the book of Ezekiel. Having the glory of God and the lighted by uh, the stones or precious stones. And like the jasper stone in every crystal. And had the walls great and high and had 12 gates at the 12 gates angels, which names thereon are written in the 12 tribes of Israel. Remember in chapter 48, and in the beginning of this process where I put the, the, the uh, Abraham and Abraham's seed, but that was the children of Israel and all the sojourners. Now, a sojourner is a stranger that lives in someone's house. In other words, if I'm living uh, in... Um, it doesn't really matter if I'm, if I'm living in uh, your house and I'm not a part of your family, I'm a stranger in your house. <clears throat> but if you own something that 
that I should have, then I should you should share that with me. And we'll give it this to see. But anyway, looking at verse 14, and the walls of the city had 12 foundations. And in them were the 12 names of the apostles of the Lamb. Well, you know who the apostles of the Lamb are. And if not, you know, want to go back to the, the uh, David uh, Book of David YouTube video and get a name of the apostles of the Lamb. Because I got books that say, can you see, I see you? Can I see, I see you too? And can you see, I see you three? Those are uh, lessons on the Book of Revelation showing you the 12 foundations and different things like that in the Book of Revelation. So make sure you go to that. And you always just study it out of your Bible. And he talked with me and had golden reeves. That's the word reeves again to measure the city. So the, the angel that's talking with the in the book of Revelation to John has a reeve in his hand and the angel that's talking that had the seven last plagues. That angel is talking to John and he's telling John in verse four, chapter verse 14 that the walls of the city had 12 foundations and in the uh, 12 foundations were the name of the apostles of the Lamb. And the Lamb and the angel showed John that talked with John and had a golden reed to measure the city. What city? The, the city that knew Jerusalem that's going to come down out of heaven up on the earth back up in uh, Ezekiel 48, 35 to give us the name of the city. And the new Jerusalem name is the Lord God is there. So in conclusion of this, I'm at the end, I'm going to recite the Lord's Prayer, and then I'm going to move out of this. But this data here that you see didn't come from the book of Ezekiel. It came from the book of Revelations. And when you go back and look at it, then you'll see what I'm talking about. And you see, uh, look at verse uh, 19 to get the name of all of the 12 gates name, because the name of the 12 gates had a name of a, of a, a jewelry. It's named after a precious stone. Each of the 12 gates are named after a precious stone, and you see the name of each stone, okay? And the 12 gates were, we're looking at 21, and the 12 gates were pearls, and and seven gates was a one pearl, and the three streets of the city were pure gold, and it were transparent as glass, and I saw the temple therein. So all this is in the book of Revelations about the city, and, the, and, the, and the, how it is associated with what we just talked about. But in conclusion, verse 23 said, And the city had no need for sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. So Jesus Christ is the Lamb of the city that lights, the, that he's talking about, that lights the city. And because Jesus Christ is the glory of God, what is Jesus Christ? He's the glory of God. He's also the Son of God. In conclusion of this, I'm going to now recite the Lord's Prayer and end this. Father, that I was come to glorify your Son, that your Son may also glorify you as you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him, and this is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, of whom you have sent. So I glorify you on the earth. I have finished the work for what you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify you, me, with your own self, with the glory which I have with you before the world was. I manifested your name unto the men which you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever you have given me are of you. For I have given unto them the words which you gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from you, and they have believed that you did send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which you have given me, for they are yours, and all yours are mine, and all mine are thine, and I am glorified in them, and now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world and I come to to you, Holy Father, keep through your own name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. So while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those that you gave me, I kept, and none of them are lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. And now come out to you in these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. And I've given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. And I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world, and sanctify them through your truth, and your word is true. As you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they may be sanctified through the truth. I neither pray I for these alone, but for them also who shall believe on me through that word, that they may be one as you, Father, in me and I in you, that they may be one in us, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I will that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am, that they 
and may behold my glory for what you have given me for you love me before the foundation of the world O righteous father the world has not known you but i have known you and these have known that you did send me and i had declared unto them your name and would declare that the love were with may be in them and i in them and that's the end of this presentation and i thank you for letting me take up one hour of your precious time to give it this please share this with at least 100 people and then ask them to share it with others i love you this is david bidding you bye bye i love you bye